A lot of people struggle with pricing because they either charge too much, which scares clients away, or they charge too little, which simply means that there's not enough profit at the end of the year to grow their business. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna walk you through how we set up an invoice or a quote for a company so that you can copy and paste that template for your own business too, and know exactly what we charge and why we charge it. But to kick things off, here are five things I want you to be thinking about throughout this whole video. Number one is you need to determine the amount of time and effort the video project is going to take. If you don't know that, it makes it very hard to price up your project. Two, you should consider the level of experience and expertise from you and your team. Number three is to do your research and see what other companies are charging for similar services. Number four, you're going to need to factor in any additional costs such as equipment rental or travel expenses, things like that. And number five is you're gonna to need to set a price that is fair and profitable for both you and your client. That's a win-win strategy that makes them want to go with you opposed to anyone else. Now, when it comes to pricing video production services, it's an absolute minefield and people price things so differently. If you're starting out or on this journey, you're gonna be asking yourself, what is the most effective for winning the projects? And how can I make the most amount of money? Let's be fair, we all want to make more money. We all think we're worth uh, you know, high amounts. And the question is, how do we get our clients to see that value? The reason it's hard to know how to price your video production services is because everyone does it differently. You'll speak to one person that says value-based pricing is the best thing. You'll speak to someone else that says something completely different and it's hard to know. So I'm gonna cover a few of the key strategies that you should use and I'm gonna tell you what we used in order to grow our business to multiple six figures a year. Now there's five key ways to price up projects. The first is cost-based pricing, where you simply see how much the project's gonna cost you and you make a markup on top of that. It's very, very simple. The second is competitive pricing, where you look at what your competitors are charging and you then either set your service pricing above that or a little bit below that to stay competitive. You've got price skimming, which is where you set your price high and you lower it over time. You have penetration pricing, which is when you go into a competitive market with a low price and you raise it over time. And finally, you have value-based pricing, which is where your prices are based on what your customer thinks it's worth. So the two that I'm gonna focus on today is competition-based pricing, because that's gonna help a lot of people out there who are just starting out on their journey. And I'm also gonna talk about value-based pricing because it's the most common thing that I have members of my academy talk to me about that really confuses them and they don't really know how best to charge their services. And like I said, at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how we price our services, which is a bit of a hybrid of a few of these options. So competition-based pricing is, is the one that I suggest people focus on the most if they're very new in their journey and just starting out and have literally no idea how to price their services. And there's three main advantages to competition-based pricing. The first is that your prices are dynamic, so they grow and they increase as your quality of work gets better. The second is that it's simple to execute because you have a good understanding that, well, these companies are already charging this amount for their videos and my videos look the same as that, so I should in theory be able to get exactly the same as what they're charging. And the third advantage is that this strategy can be combined with some of the other strategies and I'll share that with you at the very end of this video. Now there are obviously some disadvantages with competition-based pricing. And the first is that it generally ignores customer demand and you can become very stagnant in that way of thinking. So for instance, we generally use day rates. So we will charge a day rate for editing and a day rate for filmmaking. If we're basing that on what our competition are charging as a kind of an estimate and we only focus on what our competition are doing, when we grow and we become better, Sometimes our prices won't reflect that. But also what happens is you're just aiming to be your competition and you're not starting to move on your own road. Now, when you're starting out, that's not really a problem and you can focus on people around you, but it's not the best mindset to put your business in just to copy your competitors. The second disadvantage is that it can rely on an unbiased view of your own business. We all like to think our work is perhaps sometimes better than is reflected in a customer's eyes. So when you're looking at your competition, you need to take in a lot of various factors and some you won't know. So for instance, if your competition is charging $4,000 for a video and you think that their 
work is in line with yours. You don't know how many other expenses they have and how much profit they actually make out of that video. If you're comparing your team of three people to a one-man band who's charging $4,000, even if your work looks similar, they might only need to do one project a month. So for you, you're going to need to fluctuate your prices more and think about that in order to create a good and healthy profit. You might have heard the saying before that if you base your services on price, then it's just going to be a race to the bottom because everyone's going to want to be competitive. They're going to want to undercut each other and provide the best value for money. And that's something that uh, you need to be very aware of with a competition based uh, pricing structure that you don't fall into that trap and that you still value your services at a particular level. Sometimes it's not always advantageous to be the cheapest in the market, but sometimes to be the middle of the ground or the more expensive. Now, value-based pricing gets a lot of hype around it because people think that because it's value-based, you can charge however much you want. My videos are you know, worth $10,000 because it has so much value driven towards the client. But that depends on what the client sees. And there's a huge gray area with value-based pricing because your prices are always different, so they're always fluctuating. And there's some things that you really need to think about with this. However, it can be a great strategy for earning good amounts of profit margins, but that's not always the case. So value-based pricing structures are used by businesses to set a price for uh, a service, in your case, video production, that you think your client is willing to pay. And at the end of this section, I'll give you some common questions that I know members of ours use to draw out the information from the client to base their value around. Now, of course, there are a load of advantages when it comes to value-based pricing, and the first being that higher markups are possible. So unlike uh, some of the other pricing structures where you might look at your costs and make a percentage on top of that, or you might look at your competitors and see what they're charging and charge something in line with what they're doing, it enables you to look directly at your client and find out about what kind of problem they're looking to solve within their business and what value your services, your video is going to provide. Because if your video is going to help them increase sales by a million dollars, for argument's sake, then your video is worth, in essence, a lot more than potentially a thousand dollars that you were going to charge in line with your competitors. Your video should be worth at least 10, if not 50, if not $100,000, if they're gonna make a million dollars in sales out of your video. Now, of course, there's a lot of factors around that, and I have to keep mentioning that because I think it's very easy for people to be drawn to the value-based pricing structure of being able to make a lot of money very quickly, um, and that's why our hybrid method that I'll teach you at the end will help a lot. Now, the other advantage is that your own perceived value can increase. Once you've done a project, even if you're starting out, if you've done a project for $1,000, you know you're now worth $1,000. You then up your prices to $1,500 and you get some clients at $1,500. You know you're worth that and so on and so forth. So then you become very quickly, you can enter a market and with value-based pricing, you can be working on projects that are $5,000, $10,000, $50,000. And then it makes it easier to have conversations conversations with other clients knowing that, hey, your, pro your solution to another client's problem got them back this return on investment, or you have some kind of track record or case study so that you can now talk to your new client and you know that it's going to be about $50,000, etc., etc. Now, don't forget, you might be sitting there thinking, well, $50,000 is obviously a lot of money. With a $50,000 production, you're going to need a whole team of people. You're going to need to enlist the help of lots of other experts. So there are a lot of costs associated with that too. And ultimately in business, everyone shouts about big turnover numbers, but you really need to be focused on what is your profit at the end of the day. Now looking into some cons of value-based pricing and I think this is where a lot of members in my academy get caught up on, and certainly when I talk to them about pricing, we go back with our hybrid option that I'll show you in a minute. And that's because it can be very hard to know what your price is. It can be hard to set your price in the first place, and it becomes down to your negotiation skills and actually being very good in that sales setting to ask those right questions. And a few questions that I would urge you to ask is, what is the value of 
the problem that you're looking to solve. So if you're having that conversation with a client, perhaps again, they're an e-commerce brand and they're looking to have a video to boost their sales, you could ask them, well, what percentage are you looking to increase your sales by and what value does that have? And the client might say, well, we're looking to increase our sales by 10%, which would give us an extra $10,000 profit. Then you can say to them, okay, so what value do you think our video is going to have on that? Because if that's the only way they're looking to increase their sales is by implementing video, then you should be able to take a good percentage of that profit because you're the sole reason they're going to be able to get that result. You see, so there's a lot of value. All of a sudden, your video has gone from just being a price thing to being something that's very valuable to help them get that. However, it does rely on your... Um, experience and your sales expertise to show them that perceived value. And it is perceived value. So they might just be asking you for a cost. If they're speaking to one production company that says it's £1,200 and they're asking you and you're asking all of these millions of questions, even though they're good questions to ask, they might look at you and just think, well, how is your video 10000 You know, how, how comes your video is $5,000 and their video is $1,200? despite the fact that on paper your work looks identical and comparable. Now, potentially, they're not the, the type of clients that you want to be working with, and that's completely fair. But that's where you might miss out on a lot of projects. And also, it leads to another disadvantage, which is you've done some work for this client, you've value-based uh, priced uh, their project, and let's say it comes out at $5,000, and they then go and tell their friend, oh, you should work with these guys, they're great. The last project cost me $5,000. And you go through the same process with them, trying to work out the perceived value of your work, and uh, the perceived value comes out to be less than that, or more than that. That becomes quite a difficult conversation when they are really good friends and they chat about how good you are, and one of them says, yeah, I only paid $1,000. And he says, well, I paid $5,000. It becomes difficult and can, even though you can kind of try and justify that, it becomes a sticky situation when you're charging different prices with different clients for essentially the same sort of video. And that's where, again, it comes back to your experience asking the right questions where you know every video is different, but you need to be able to very quickly justify those factors with value-based pricing. And keep in mind that it doesn't always lead to higher profit margins, and that I think can be something that's a huge gray area. Value-based pricing is the gray area of the sales industry. So to wrap up value-based pricing, you want to ask the right questions, find out how valuable your products and services are. You need to do a good job of showcasing and getting across that value at the start. You almost don't even want to be talking about pricing for the first couple of meetings. You just want to be focused on all the value that you're bringing. And it might work out that you make a lot more money from it, but that's not always the case and it can rely on your analysis of the client and their problems, but also how much they value you and deem your product to be the solution for their business. So it's really important for you to know those two key areas because for the beginners, you're gonna to wanna to focus probably more on competition. For the more experienced people, you're gonna to wanna to move more towards value-based pricing, but it's quite difficult to know that when you're first starting out. Or you can use our hybrid solution, which consists of cost pricing, penetration pricing, and competitive pricing. So I'm gonna dive into that now. I'm gonna screen share with you how I would price up an invoice. And this is the strategy we use to help grow our business from zero to hundreds of thousands in revenue each year. Okay, so the first thing I would look at is how long is the project going to take me to film? Or actually, firstly, is there any pre-production needed? When I was starting out, we hardly did any pre-production, so I'm gonna leave that. But you're looking at time factors here. So um, let's say this is gonna take a day of filming. So one day filming, okay. And how long is it gonna take me to edit? Okay, it's gonna probably take me two days of editing. Editing. Then what other costs are associated with that? So we're looking at travel costs. Um, we're also looking at maybe music licensing, potentially equipment, higher costs or things like that. 
Okay, so we've got those listed down and, and the reason I focused on this is because we're looking at the cost-based pricing to begin with and then we're gonna start to develop our hybrid method. So one day of filming is around about eight hours for us. So uh, let's say we're gonna do, uh, we wouldn't do this hourly, but let's say how much are you charging your, at yourself out at? So in terms of the cost to the business, and this is where if you're starting out, you need to see the business as one entity and you as another. So what are your wages for that day? So let's say, keep numbers nice and simple, you charge $10 or 10 pound uh, an hour, it's gonna cost, uh, that's your wages. So um, we're going to be looking at a unit price of 80 pound. Okay, so this is what the cost is to the business. So 80 pound uh, for uh, that, we're gonna do quantity as one, and we'll do quantity as two here because it's two days editing. Uh, we can ignore the VAT uh, at the moment um, because for the purposes of doing this. And depending on where you are in the country or in the world as well, you'll have different tax structures. So then we're looking at travel. So we might charge a travel fee for mileage or fuel or something like that. So the same sort of thing here. Um, how much does that cost your business? So let's say it costs your business 40 pounds or $40 or whatever it is, okay? Um, the same thing, we'll just do no that for the time being. Music licensing. So uh, music licensing, again, let's say that just costs you, um, uh, I don't know, maybe it costs you $20. And equipment hire. Now equipment hire, I personally think you can run into some problems here because you'll get clients that will say to you, well, Ross, do I need an A7S 3 or do I need a red camera? They won't know what the difference is. So we generally include that in our filming rate because we own our equipment. Um, but I'm gonna put it in here for the purposes of, of this. Um, however, we would just include it as part of our cost of sale because we already own the equipment. So let's say equipment hire costs you $100 or whatever it is, okay? So now, in order for you to complete this project for a client, you're looking at a total of $400 or 400 pounds. So you would then make a markup on this because that's the, the cost to your business. So your business needs to make some money, right? So you might want to charge anywhere between 20 and 60% markup on something like this. So you would simply go through and change each one of these items to add 20% uh, on top of that or whatever your figure is and that will give you your project total. If you keep that percentage the same on your markup, how much you're charging in addition to the costs, then you're gonna have a pretty set pricing structure that's gonna be quite similar for a lot of businesses which will help when you're talking uh, about prices and being able to think of them on the spot. So I said this was gonna be a hybrid and this is where we bring in the competition-based pricing or competitor-based pricing. So we look at other people in our industry um, and as well as I suggest people who are just starting out do this as well. Talk to people, find out what kind of prices they're charging for their services and how are they co comparable to you. Now doing this in a competitor analysis way is a really nice way of doing this, jotting it down on a bit of paper, rank them versus their price versus the quality of their work and you'll start to work out where you fit in that overall picture. So if I know, for instance, our local production company is charging um, 500 uh, pound or 500 dollars uh, for a day of filming and a day of editing and their work is comparable with ours then this is where I would start to take that and I would say okay well the unit price is 500 and that's where we start to make those markups. Now for travel, music, licensing, equipment hire I'm still going to be using that cost uh, base pricing structure where I'm making a percentage on top of that. So if something costs me, a music license costs me $20, uh, I'm gonna be charging that out at something like probably closer to $30 so I can make a small markup on that because it's taken me to find that website, to find the music, etc. There's a bit of time element in with that so I'll make a markup, a percentage on everything that I charge out. The same as equipment hire, if it's costing me $100 to hire a camera for a day, I'll charge that to the client at probably about $150 or something like that. And don't forget, this also includes a little bit of value-based pricing. Not in the typical sense of what value does the client think that our video produces, but in 
the sense of how much do I value myself? Because some people say the problem with this structure is it's similar to time-based pricing where you charge for just your time. And I say, well, no, because my time to the business is only 80 pound or $80, but the value that I'm bringing for my experience, and remember those questions that I asked you at the start of this video, they're the things I'm thinking about. My experience, my team's experience, our expertise, what is that worth? And what are other people charging with our, in our industry and how do we compare to them? Then it gives us a good benchmark. So actually, we're charging $420 more um, because of our value that we produce and our experience and our expertise. So it's not just focused on time, we've also focused on those elements of uh, you know, the bigger picture. And remember, this doesn't mean charging lower than your competition because that could be a race to the bottom, like I mentioned earlier, but you can also charge more. It just gives you a benchmark to go by. There's lots of other factors that will be unique to your business, and they're the things that you need to take into account as well so that the customers or the potential clients aren't just comparing an apple with an apple. They're starting to see the differences between you and the other people in your industry as well. So this pricing structure is something that we used for years to grow our business to multiple six figures. And when we started this, we actually didn't even include things like travel music or equipment hire. Like I said, we just did it all under our, including in our day rate for filming and our day rate for editing. But we've recently reverted back to this structure of labeling out all of our associated costs. Because then when a client says that, excuse me, um, we actually don't have budget for that. That, that project is you know, $1,600 or 1600 pounds, we only have budget for a thousand, I can come into here and I can say, okay, well, why don't we get rid of this? We can get rid of that. We can get rid of this, that, and the other. Then the client feels like they're losing things, which they don't like. So then they say, actually, can we keep that, but maybe scrap that? And then you can say, well, yeah, we can scrap that, but that's really useful because of this. And you can start to have those conversations where it means that actually you can get more out of the client than they were willing to spend but also you can do less for the money as well. So it's not comparable. It's not you, the fact that you're over delivering and potentially in a value-based pricing structure, this can be detrimental. Uh, that can be detrimental because the client says, well, I only see the value being a thousand dollars. Obviously you don't have to accept it, but doing it this way, you can sit down with them and say, well, look, if your budget's only a thousand dollars, then we're going to have to get rid of a day of editing and we can get rid of maybe the music licensing and use some free website, which won't be as good. Then, that brings it down, but also saves you on your time and the effort that takes to go into that as well. So there's some really good things to think about with this structure. Now, we're actually at a really interesting time with our business where we're starting to look more into the value-based pricing as we start to pitch for much, much bigger projects. But at the moment, this is what we're using. Now, the third element that I mentioned is that if you are just starting out, it can be very confusing. And you've probably seen people who sell courses who have tons of spreadsheets about how to price your structures uh, and structure your day rates and all of these things. I really just think keeping it simple is gonna be the most valuable thing to you. And using a penetration structure might be an easy thing to go by. I generally say to people, if you're just starting out, charge something. Charge $50 for a project, charge $100, then up it a little bit more. I have a member on the academy um, who actually very recently landed his first client for $500 and then had a, a business call with another client the day after and said to them, he panicked a bit and he said it's going to be $1,000 because he knew he already he landed a project for $500 easy. So he knew he was a bit more and uh, he's obviously just waiting to hear back. But if he lands that, then he knows he's worth $1,000 so he can start to up his prices as time goes on as well. There's no wrong or right answer when it comes to pricing your services. So go with the one that resonates with you the most and that is clear and concise. Because if you start having business meetings where you're unsure, it's gonna feel uncertain to your clients and it's gonna make them not want to go with you. If you wanna know some easy tips and how we land clients on more than $10,000 projects, then watch this video right here. It's got a few more strategies inside it that will showcase how we land those clients. So take a look at that and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.